In this video, we will show you how to build a voice flow chat bot to convert text to image using Stable Diffusion XL AI model via NVDIA's API. It is free and no code. It can generate awe-inspiring images from any description with unlimited text to image prompts. Let us first go to Google search and enter NVIDIA SDXL. Click on the first search result. We are now on the NVIDIA webpage showing the Stable Diffusion XL model. This model can do text to image generation and runs pretty fast. On the playground, you can submit your prompt and the AI model will generate an image for you. But today, I will show you how to integrate this model with Voice Flow Chat Bot, where the user can enter text and see the image. On the top right corner, click the sign in or sign up to load the web page. If you do not have an account yet, you need to enter your email address and follow the instructions to create one. You will receive a confirmation email and need to click the link inside the email. Once you have successfully logged on to your account, you will need to generate an API key and save it in a safe place because you will not find it on your account. I know it sounds weird, but this is how it works. Next, let us go to Voice Flow. On the Voice Flow canvas, we drop an API block and rename it as NVIDIA SDXL API. We will need to populate the sections with corresponding values in order to make API calls. Let us go to the NVIDIA account and click on the API tab. Here, we can see the URL where the API calls can go, and the headers, the data sent to the API, and the response from the API, and we can see other parameters as well. The first thing we are going to do is copy the URL. We paste the URL on the API block, and change the request status to post. We will need the values for the headers section. Make a copy of the authorization. On the headers section, click the plus sign to add a pair of key and value. We paste the authorization here. Next, make a copy of the value of authorization and paste it in this box. Here, we need to place the API key. We are going to use a set block to assign the API key to a variable. Let us put a set block on the canvas and select the NVIDIA API key variable. If you do not see it on the list of variables, you can create one. We input a pair of quotation marks. As I have copied my API key, I am going to paste it between the quotation marks. We connect the set block with the API block. Now let us place the NVIDIA API key variable after the bearer, which should be wrapped with curly braces. Click the plus sign to add another pair. We make a copy of accept and paste it in the box. Make a copy of application slash JSON and paste it in the box. Click the plus sign again and make a copy of content type and paste it here. Make a copy of application slash JSON and paste it in the box. Now we are done with the header section. Next we click on the plus sign of the body section and select the raw radio button. Make a copy of the data including the two curly braces. Paste it in the body. We can see there is prompt which will instruct the AI model to generate an image that the user wants to present. The negative prompt is to define what the user does not want to be included in the image. For example, you do not want the red color, then, you add red, here. In the original data, we see beach, which will be excluded in the image. The sampler is the name of the model sampler, by default, it is DPM. You also can explore other samplers, to see difference. The seed governs image generation. If we change the seed value, the output will be different. By default, the seed has a value of zero. The guidance scale is similar to temperature in chat GPT. Its default value is five. The inference steps are the number of diffusion steps applied to generate an output image. The more steps, the longer the call will take, and up to a point, the higher quality the image will be. On the documentation tab, you can see the schemas, and after you expand the image request, you can see the details of each parameter. Now let us run a test. It shows that the API call has successfully triggered. This tells us that the settings of our API block are correct. In the API block, we click the plus sign of capture response. We enter response dot b64 underscore JSON and select the variable of answer to save the data. The API returns the JPEG image in the base64 string format. We will add a prefix in order to show the image to the user. In the set block, we click the add set button to add another variable 
and select the variable of image type. We enter the string to indicate the data type and format. Next, we drop another set block on the canvas and set the variable answer with the value of image type plus the answer. So the answer will include both the prefix and the base64 string data. We connect the API block with the set block. We drop an image block to show the image to the user, and in the link, we input the variable of answer. Connect the set block with the image block, and our simple chatbot demo has been established. Let us click the start to run a test. And we see the image showing a dog riding a bicycle with a black backpack. This means that everything works great so far. Next, we will let the user input his prompt to generate an image he wants. Let us drop a text block on the canvas. We enter, I am the text to image AI assistant. What kind of image do you want me to generate? We drop a capture block under the text block. We are going to capture the entire user reply and save it in a variable called prompt. We connect the capture block with the API block and connect the set block with the text block. In the API block, we delete the original prompt and put the variable prompt wrapped with curly braces. For the negative prompt, you can test on your own. For now, we may not need it at this moment. Let us delete the original one and leave it empty over there. For the rest of the parameters, we can just use the default values. Of course, you can try out by yourself. If we do it here, it will take hours long video, which we do not want to happen. Now let us run a test again. We enter the prompt, a bottle of wine standing on a table surrounded by beautiful flowers. The bot returns a nice image as expected. It looks good, isn't it? Next, we are going to use a card block to display images to the user, because we can show the title and description as well, which can improve user experience. Let us drop a card block on the voice flow canvas. Click the link tab and we input the variable answer as the image. On the title, we enter beautiful image. On the description, we input the variable of prompt, which describes the image content entered by the user. We connect the set block with the card block. Now let us run a test. This time, we are going to let the bot generate an image showing a cat swimming in the sea with highlight on its face. The bot returns the image with a cat, which is so cute. And we can see the titled beautiful image and the description of the image content, which I think is pretty well. In this case, the card block presents the image and description in a way much better than an image block does. Next, we are going to add two buttons on the card block. On the button section, click the plus sign. We enter, continue, which indicates that the user wants to continue the conversation if he clicks this button. Click the plus sign to add an action. Click the go to block. Select the home, and then, the new block too which is the set block at the beginning of the chatbot. We click the plus sign to add another button. We enter end conversation. Click the plus sign and select end. The conversation will end if the user clicks this button. With these two buttons, the loop has been formed if the continue button is clicked, and it will exit the loop if the end conversation button is clicked. Let us run another test. We are going to ask the bot to generate an image with a white dog walking on the Mars. The bot displays the image together with the title and the description. We also can see two buttons. Let us click the continue button. Next, we will let the bot generate an image of cat riding a surfboard. The bot returns an image of another cute cat. Let us click the continue button again. This time, we will input a longer prompt to let the bot generate an image of Yosemite Valley view at noon. We can see the image of the Yosemite Valley with waterfalls, snowy mountains, forests, and rivers which have been described in the prompt. Let us click the button to end the conversation. In summary, we have shown you how to build a text-to-image chat bot using Stable Diffusion XL AI model via NDDIA's API. This is completely free and no code. We use a set block to store the API key and prefix of the image data type. In the text block, we ask the user to input his prompt, and we use a capture block to save the entire user reply in a variable. We use an API block to send the data and the user prompt to the SDXL model and capture the response and save the image data in the variable of answer. Do not forget to concatenate the prefix with the image data in the set block. Finally, we can use an image block to display the image. But I prefer to use a card block, which shows the title and description as well. We also use two buttons to form or exit the conversation loop. Lastly, you may need to adjust the parameters and do prompt engineering to optimize the answer.
If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.